And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Tech Tip Tuesday. I look at the gear, gadgets, technology that goes into the sport of stand-up paddling. I'm your host, Drew with a U, and what a better way to kick off this new series than with two of the industry's leaders. One we've had on the show multiple different times, and one that you might not know about, but you're going to learn a lot from today. And in the world of stuff, you need two things. You need a paddle, and you need a board. And here, introducing on the show today, we have Chris Freeman from Black Project Sup and Dave Bainey from Infinity Sup. Good to have you boys on the show. Good to be here. Thanks for having us. Yeah, Drew, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. Well, I'll tell you, I am so excited to, to have you guys on and be talking about the technical elements because it always comes up. And Dave, you know, you and I have touched upon some of these things in the world of board shapes and the evolution over the years. And I think it's just phenomenal to see how far we've kind of come in such a short period of time why don't you give us a little history for those folks that might not know on the infinity brand how it came about and and where, how you got to where you are today uh yeah well um you know the short story is you know we've always made all types of surfboards so obviously when uh stand-up paddling came around we jumped right in and started doing stand-up paddling and um, as the sport grew and got more progressive um, I was heavily involved in surfing and wanting to get better. So the shapes progressed along with it, right? So we went from the right. short, like the long single pin stuff, to the short board, low volume stuff. And, you know, here we are today. Everybody's getting barreled. Guys are doing airs. Um, you know, we've learned a lot about fins and equipment and, you know, specific paddle shapes specifically for surfing. So we've come a long way. And, uh, you know, guys like Black Project and Chris, you know, have kind of been linear with what we're doing in our trajectory. And Chris, a lot of people call you the uh, engineer of the sport. <laughs> and uh, I, I, a lot of people look at you at trying different things and, and really kind of capturing that ingenuity aspect. So why don't you give us a little background on Black Project Up and, and how it all came about? Yeah, well, Black Project's been, uh, we, we originally came from windsurfing, as many are based on Maui. So. We were in that world for a long period of time and stand-up really came about because we, had, we were surrounded by athletes like Bart Deswart and, and so on in those days and I wanted to go paddling. I needed something else to do and I got into paddling and because I was in that world of making things, um, I was working in the windsurf industry, I decided to start making my own paddles because I wasn't going to go and buy one and it just grew from there really and yeah, it's everything. I think being a little bit away from that early scene as well kind of gave us a fresh perspective to come in and use our ideas and, and really try new things. What do you do or how do you come up with the creative elements to kind of challenge yourself to create something that could be a game changer in the, in the world of stand-up paddling or design or whatnot? It's easy for me because I, 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 I do the sport myself a lot and I think that's a big, that's a big uh, you know, plus. I mean, there, there, are, there are quite a lot of brands that I feel the guys designing and making a product really don't maybe do the, the sport to the extent that like myself or Chris do. So, right. um, you know, we have hands-on experience and, you know, it, it helps a lot when you know what you're talking about. And, and a lot of the times the uh, athletes, the good ones who can com communicate what they want, um, that's the perfect match. And that's who I look to work with. My ideas really came out of the, a lot of people were using paddles which were badly suited to them. And um, I've come from a, a world of you know, windsurfing, tennis, rugby, and my body's taken a beating, um, and my shoulders are taking a beating, and paddling, I want to make it easy. And that's what it comes out of. It's all about making things easy. So every, a lot of things we're doing is all about protecting our body. And if you can protect your body, whether you're an amateur paddling on a Saturday afternoon or a racer at the end of a long, hard season, if you've saved a bit of energy or had a little bit less injury over that period of time, then you're gonna perform better. And you bring up a good point, and I'm gonna throw this over to Dave. Dave, you know, Chris talks about the synergies in between the paddle and the board design. How do you as a board designer look at that and sort of work with people like Chris? You know, it's just, uh, just my experience. I know what I want, right? Like I, I paddle surf a lot. I've been doing it a long time. I know what works for specifically surfing. I know what works for, for specifically racing and, and at least what I wanted to feel out of that. You know, like the smaller blades for surfing, higher cadence, um, you know, less less torque on the, on the initial, you know, uh, pull on your shoulders, um, but it's more of like a first gear, right? And then racing can be more powerful, more drawn out, you know, grab more water. 
And Chris, these board design or these paddle designs, how how do you come up with them? Is it is it more like computer based in design, or is it more just trial and error? Um, well, we're very much um, not a trial and error kind of um, setup. Um, everything is is modeled and then printed, uh, and then we three D printed in carbon, and then we test it from there, and then gradually make our adjustments. Um, I, I work um, very closely with my designer, um, Tom, and uh, he's the expert in sort of understanding how water moves around. My role is more talking about feeling, talking to athletes, talking to customers. And we really focus on the, what do we want to feel rather than, you know, specific sizing, you know, and so on. I've spent a lot of time counseling, even, you know, Seychelles, for example, and saying, well, what are you feeling with your paddle? Maybe this is where we need to go with it. Yeah, the, the main thing is lots of modeling, lots of 3D printing, lots of testing, and we've able, been able to shorten the development time you know, a lot and go much further forward with it than we could have gone with before. Uh, and then, you know, it's been lovely to see um, Shay come on now with the flash paddle. Uh, and the flash paddle is modeled on the same paddle which Seychelles won the world title with. So um, she's been, Shay's been using that for a little while now, so. So Dave, I see behind you, you have this series of paddle that we're talking about here. Why don't you break it off the shelf and, and show it off to the world? Oh, well, oh, it just happens to be there. I didn't know it was there. <laughs> Bring that baby over here. Let me see it. Explain oh, yeah. what's going uh, on here. You know, it's a little used, you know, cause I, you know, authentic. I've been using it actually, but uh, yeah, I mean, that's it. This is the, uh, this is the flash paddle. This is the proto, so it doesn't have like the correct flash graphics on it, but it it does give you an idea of some of the branding we did on it. You know, obviously the, the stripes matching with our boards or whatever. But um, yeah, I mean, it's super cool. This is this is basically the Hydro Blade from Black Project. And, you know, really the difference between the Black Project and Infinity Paddles, it's, it's not much, you know. Um, obviously, Chris has um, different shafts that he uses, you know, the silver shafts. Um, Chris allowed us to choose um, shaft diameters and shaft materials and blade sizes. So basically I worked with my uh, my athletes and we came up with the range, right? So we matched blade size with shaft diameter um, to, to get the flex and the feel out of, um, you know, the hydro blade that Chris already made. So it's already been proven. We didn't really necessarily have to test it. It was just matching up the different flex and um, you know shafts and materials. So this is 100% carbon, super light. I love how Black Project, like um, you know, it's just it flows right into the neck right here. A lot of paddles you'll see it like steps up and they got to put a rubber gusset on there. Like it's just clean, it's watertight, it's like the best in the biz. And um, you know, it's always fun to just hit it with a little color and stuff. But uh, yeah, Chris was really open to us you know, putting whatever kind of art we wanted on it. And, um, you know, he basically gave us, you know, free range of, of his line and we pieced it together in a way that we, that made sense to us. So, um, you know, lightweight, I can't even think of anyone that's broken one and brought one back. I mean, it's been so nice and effortless that uh, it's been great. Yeah, so that that's the flash pile. And that's the one that, um, that Shay, Shay won to, you know, used in, in the APP and, and, and won the world title with. So it's a- uh, And Chris, let's start talking a little bit more technical. Dave got to show it off a little bit. <laughs> Tell us about some of the technicality going into that design. Okay, this is, I've actually got, um, this is Seychelles actual paddle. I, I stole that from her after last year. So now the, this paddle, um, got a really strong um, blade through here through our scoop, we call our scoops dihedral blade, and it's very narrow. You can see it's very straight-sided and narrow, which both those things make it very stable through the water, but also very easy to get in and out of the water. So if you, particularly at a high cadence, the in, out, in, out, and that's become really important for paddling uh, in these last few years, especially for the APP racing with lots of short distance. And remember back to when we were in Japan, um, at the end of 2019 was, wasn't it? So uh, the, the sprints there and super short distance and you've got to accelerate really, really quickly. So you need a paddle that can get in and out of the water very, very quickly and efficiently. Um, 
This paddle has an eight degree blade angle, so it's, it's, it's lower than most other paddles. A shallow paddle design, again, gives it ultra direct feel. Um, as, you, as you, in, you can know exactly what the paddle is doing. And I think that's one of the things that um, a lot of the athletes love. Dave mentioned about uh, no breaking paddles. We, they, thankfully, paddles don't break very much now for us. Now, one of the things you'll notice when you see, it's hard to see on here, but on the front of the paddle, and it was one of where we started some of our new ideas concepts, is bringing in more volume into the front of the paddle and a ridge along the front of the paddle. Now, this not only um, has some advantages through the water, but this adds strength. So by changing the way that actually you think about the blade design, we can start to look at different constructions as well. And that's how we start moving the evolution goes forward by reimagining the design, which means we can reimagine the way we make it. I'll tell you what, it's been so great getting to talk shop with you guys. Two of the most innovative, progressive people in the world of stand-up paddling. Dave Bainey, Chris Freeman, thank you so much for joining us here on this Tech Tuesday. I look forward to seeing what you guys come up with next because I'm sure it's going to be mind-blowing. Thanks, thanks for including me in this. It's been a real, a real pleasure. You got right. it. Have a good day, Chris. Dave? Cheers. Nice to see you guys. See ya. Bye.